Hello, welcome and thanks for choosing this video. When it comes to selling stuff on eBay, most sellers would have the business mindset of the more you have on your list, the more you can sell. What you didn't know is that there's more to eBay than meets the eye. There is so much more you can do with eBay instead of selling stuff from your own list. That being said, let me share with you several strategies that you can do to sell stuff that you don't even have to entirely own it to sell it out. Perhaps one of the most basic ways and the most applied way of making money on eBay by sellers, which is selling collectibles, antiques, and memorabilia in specific categories on eBay for the highest market prices. Generally, any eBay seller out there that sells collector's items is usually well-versed with what they're selling because it could be their hobby or interest. This is the part where you should start, and that's where you will make the most money using this strategy. Do more in-depth reading in your field to widen your knowledge and get as much good reference material and price guides as you can. Now, if you have sufficient knowledge and experience in the items, what can you do to maximize your income selling antiques, collectibles, and memorabilia on eBay? If you're listing items for sale using eBay's provided selling form, you're actually losing money here. What you should do is get an eBay listing software and save each listing you make. Through this method, when you're ready to sell the same item or similar item again, all you have to do is press a couple of keys to list. Check out Shooting Star Software now to list auctions and track post-auction management, which is available at this site, www.foodogssoftware.com. This software allows you to save every listing on your hard drive, and it includes free auction counters. Moreover, this software allows you to make unlimited listings, not just on eBay, but on other e-commerce sites as well, such as Amazon. There are various softwares out there today for you to try out, ever since auction selling has become popular in the Internet. Generally, any software company out there will offer 30 days before you have to buy or register, which is good. There's also software out there that is offered free, but the feature certainly cannot be compared to paid software. Now that being said, search and try out the software and see which one complements well with you. When I state how to sell stuff you don't own, what it really means is selling other people's stuff such as antiques, collectibles, or even other eBay seller's items for a percentage of the hammer price. You can handle tasks such as determining the best photo to use, creating the descriptions of the listed item, handling the transaction, and shipping process. To earn back the effort that you put out, you can charge for 10 to 20 percent or more of the hammer price after cutting down the eBay fees. You can use the net listing where the owner says to you, all I want to get out of this sale is 50 bucks. You can keep whatever you get over that. The low minimum bid method may not work in this situation and you'll probably require making it a reserve auction or kickstart the auction at $60, that's 50 plus 20 percent, with no reserve. If it fails to sell, make sure you get a refund for eBay's listing fees or get them up front from the owner. A short contract between you and the owner is essential. An attorney will be more than willing to help you put one together that you can use. Use it over and over again by photocopying it and filling in the details with every new client. Check with your attorney before doing this to prevent any legal problems from occurring. There shouldn't be many problems with doing this and there are people out there who practice it and make lots of money not just for himself but for the clients as well. It's pretty much a win-win situation between you and the owner. All you have to offer is your technical expertise and the owner provides the merchandise. It's as simple as that. To find a client, all you need to do is search eBay seller ID, TopCat, to see his or her listings. 99% of the items he or she is selling are on consignment from other antique dealers. Arbitrage is basically a method used in the stock market by big players who search for price discrepancies from a single market to another. This method is even repurposed and applied in the eBay marketplace. All you need to practice this method is to specialize in the item you desire to sell. Add depth to your knowledge, read more books, study anything related to your field. That way you see the item you understand, all the features from top to bottom compared to other sellers out there that provide an overview, explanation, or a description of the item. From there, you can turn around and sell the item on eBay gain for a nice profit due to the fact you fully understand its true value, comprehensive description of the item, better quality pictures with various angles of the item, 
instilling great confidence to the bidders that you know what you're selling. That's basically what eBay arbitrage strangle is. What you should do to take opportunity of the eBay's market on the buying side of the trade. Create a list of search items that will help you seek out items that you're interested in. Take for instance when you search for a limited edition gaming mouse. Always have a list of terms in a text file on your computer and all you have to do is copy and paste the keywords into eBay search window. When you're coming up with a list of items, use terms that a person who's familiar with what they have listed would use. For example, the limited edition gaming mouse, search on limited edition glow-in-the-dark mouse. Always make your search terms obvious. Once you've found an item that you know you can make a profit out of it, bid early and enter the highest bid you're willing to pay. Do not ever go back and enter another bid. That's a straight path to losing your money. If you get it at your preferred price or better, good. If not, the item goes beyond your highest determined price, just forget it and move on to the next item. It's very easy to have bids on 50 to 100 items at one time. If you went 10 or 20 out of 100, you're actually doing very well. When it comes to searching for certain items that are not sold at retail stores, your best bet is to look for it at the local auction house or during an online search. That being said, let's look into what kind of places you should keep an eye out. Yard sales, a great place to buy cheap and rare items. Generally, you don't have to spend much time looking for auction merchandise at yard sales unless you're looking to buy conventional items. Rummage sales, similar to yard sales, but they are run by NGO. Charitable fundraising sales and auctions. These sales are run by volunteers of an organization who are trying to raise money. Most of the items are donated to the organization where the items are priced and tagged before auctioning. Estate sales, usually conducted when the estate wants to get rid of old items to pay off outstanding debts or just to cash in the items. The Salvation Army, reasonable place to look for eBay merchandise and they are reasonably priced occasionally. Used bookstores, Generally, when certain books do not make any sales and they're just eating up storage space while trying to stock in new books, store owners would usually sell it for below the market price. This is a great opportunity to snag some books that are highly sought after in the market if you have knowledge of it. Mail order sources. There are various booksellers and glass dealers and other antique dealers out there who would only do business by mail. Get on as many mailing lists and ask for as many catalogs as you can. There will always be bargains from time to time and it's generally worth getting the catalogs even if you never buy anything because they offer important market information and description of the items. One dollar stores. Yes, one dollar, but the items are either books or merchandise. New stores. You can find good stock in new stores at the main sales table. At times, the items such as closeouts or specials can be bargain. At times, the item once purchased are not returnable. Shows and fairs, generally run by associations in which members of the organizations can display their items. Usually, they hold them at large halls at places such as a university, hotel, or convention center, or even an auditorium. The Internet, pretty much the only place that you can find any item that you search for.